No, I don't think I don't think so. <laughs> this is your job. Try to figure out based on all the clues I've given today exactly how old I am. All right. At any rate. Uh, again, the focus of this class is in HTML, but the thought is, is we want to put together our multimedia in HTML5. Now, um, and therefore, I want to cover like at least enough of it so that you know what to do. So for some folks in this class, this might be review. For other folks in this class, this might be the first time that you've seen it. Um, it might be even that maybe you know HTML, but you haven't had HTML5. So... Again, for any number of reasons, it's good to uh, to um, go over this stuff. And I want to make sure, um, obviously, again, the purpose of going over HTML is so that you have something like to put your project in, all right, sort of a container for your project. So you have all these multimedia elements. Let's say you 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 decide that you're going to do, you know video clip and an audio clip and images and text. Well, you have to have something to put it in, all right? We're not going to do a Word document or anything like that or PowerPoint. We want to do a website, so we're going to do HTML5 code. So we're going to use our web pages as a container for our multimedia, all right? Um, so what do we need to know how to do in order to do this? Some of it we've covered, some of it we haven't covered. We need to know how to do text, and we haven't really talked about that yet, but we'll talk about it now, uh, or by now I mean later today. Text, both how to put text in and the formatting, in other words, the typography. We're not going to make you experts in this stuff, but at least we can get you going in the right direction, and if you are interested, this is a good thing to delve in deeper. And as we get into the mode of, uh, as we get into the mode of uh, working on our, our semester projects, then, you know, if it's something that you think is important for your project, then we can spend more time talking about it on a more individual basis. So that we have not talked about yet, so I'll put a little X next to it. We'll talk about that today. We talked about how to incorporate images, and that is with the IMG tag. We have talked about how to incorporate audio, and that is with the audio tag. We have talked about how to create video, and that is the video tag. So these we've talked about. The last multimedia element is animation, which we will talk about starting next time. All right? And that's with the canvas element. But we haven't talked about that yet. We will talk about that uh, next time. In addition to these, the five multimedia elements that, that you may or may not need on, your given, on any given project, <clears throat> we also want to talk about how to link between pages. So navigation. So that's something we have not talked about yet. All right. And the other thing that we want to do is we want to do some very basic layout, which we haven't talked about yet. All right. So my goal for today is to kind of hit these three, these three things. And again, we went over these. You know, if you have questions, by all means, you can ask about them either individually or in class. And definitely, as you work through your assignments and your projects you know, we'll get to this stuff. This one is coming up probably starting next week. I have to look at the schedule for sure. And these I hope to cover today so that you can do it. So you can embed all your stuff. So I have a nice little, like, sort of container for all your multimedia stuff. Instead of just giving me a bunch of disjointed files all around that I have to pick and choose, you create a whole user experience for that. So let's start out talking about um, text and typography. Do keep in mind, for those of you that do know HTML5 in, in greater detail, or, in eight, or even HTML in great detail, I'm not covering everything about it. So, 
you know, if you say, why didn't he talk about this or why didn't he talk about that? Well, you know, we only have so much time. Feeling a little lazy today, so I'm going to copy the start of a web page from our friends at W3 Schools. Yeah, exactly. It's important, I think I've talked about this when you're doing multimedia stuff, to be looking at the file extensions. So depending on your operating system, you should go in and do not hide extensions so that we can see exactly what these files are. Now this I made called index.txt. I'm going to rename it to index.html. And I'm going to open it and edit it in Notepad++, which is a neat little text editor that we can use. All right. We talked about before that this is a shell of an HTML page. That an HTML page consists of a series of tags. And these tags are nested. By nested, I mean that each tag has a start and ending tag. And when a tag starts inside a tag, it also ends inside that tag. So it's completely contained within that tag. Notice here that this head tag starts within HTML, so it ends within HTML. This one starts within HTML, so this ends. You wouldn't have this. This would be incorrect. <coughs> because the head tag starts within HTML, but it ends within the body tag. It ends as part of the body tag. So it didn't start within the body tag, so it's not going to end in the body tag. The head and body are the two main parts of this. For those of you that have done some HTML before, notice how much more simple how much more simple the doc type is. You know, if you held a gun at me, I couldn't tell you the doc type for an HTML4 uh, because there's just a lot of stuff in it. But the doc type for HTML5 is a lot simpler. Yes? Are you saying doc? Doc type. Okay. Yeah. Doc type. Oh, duh. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Doc type. They, go ahead. Uh -huh. Well, we'll show an example of doing CSS in a minute here. Okay. All right. One thing that always should be in the head should be a title. And I deliberately called this page index.html because it's good practice to make your home page called index.html. So index.html is, is typically the first page, the home page of a project. So I'm going to do something like I'll call this sample project. That's a good question. No, the indentations are actually not required, but it makes your life as a developer easier because then you can easily see that this tag is inside the head. You could, you could really literally have everything on one line that just wrapped around forever. But the problem is if you had to go back and change it later on, you'd be, be real confusing. It would be hard to see. Because um, for some things, the, 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 some things the, the browser is very forgiving and will forgive you if there's like a tag misplaced. But in other cases, if the tag's misplaced, you have no idea, you know, and, and you're, you know, you throw your arms up. So I usually indent like that just to keep it neat so I can at a glance, you know. I take my glasses off and I literally cannot read any of the words on this, but I can tell you that this tag is inside of this tag, all right, just based on the indenting. So that, 
Any little thing that you can do to make it a little easier, your life easier and make it more readable is, is typically welcome. Now, a couple basic tags in HTML5. There is a header tag. There is a nav tag. There is a section tag. And there is a footer tag. There's other tags like this as well. But these are the tags that sort of separate your page into like main sections. Would the header normally be above the, the head? No, that's the that's case of it being unfortunately named. The header is part of the body. Okay. All right. Yeah, that, that's, that's a case where, you know, there's head and header, and they're for two different purposes, and their names are similar, so that's a little confusing. But the header is part of the body. These represent the main sections of the page, the main uh, uh, parts, building blocks of the page. Now, we could do something, um, we could do something, um, what am I going to say here? We could do something a lot more involved in this. We could have a page with multiple sections. In addition, there's some other things other than sections, like articles and all that. But generally speaking, if you're talking about a small page for a small site, which you're likely to have, you're probably going to have your page organized like this. The header is meant to be a banner that tells people like what your project is and you know, what, what your web page is about. What do they call these sites that you use to end with? Well, the, the whole thing is called a tag. Okay, that again. That I just, I just say the less than and greater than sign. If there's another name for them, I don't know. I just wondered if they had a no. name related to HTML. No, no I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe they do. All right. So within the header is going to be like the banner. It's always a good idea to be very clear about what your site is about. All right. You don't want people looking at your site guessing what is this about. And even if you are like a world famous organization, all right, you still want to be clear and identify yourself. For example, Ford Motor Company. You know, everyone in the world has heard of the Ford Motor Company, yet it's still a good idea to have something on there because the Ford Motor Company itself may have several different sites. It may have a site for consumers. It may have a site for investors. It might have a site for businesses that it deals with. So therefore, Ford Motor Company is liable to have a bunch of little sites, maybe, I don't know for sure, but I'm speculating, that people might go to, depending on what, how they interact with the Ford Motor Company. So it's always good to put something in the header that represents what your company is and, and the purpose of the website. To make things even more confusing, there's an H1 tag that is also sometimes called a heading. That is sort of the main heading, top level heading, if you're thinking like an outline. So probably the heading tag, or the header tag, will contain like an H1 at least. Could contain other tags as well. Could contain, for example, the organization's logo. All right, that would be a, a good. Uh, a good thing that you could you could do for this um, is is to show um, the organization's logo. You could put images in the H1 tag. Not in the H1 tag, but in the header oh, tag. Okay. Yeah, in, inside the header tag, you could put that. Not within the H1. All right. In the section, if you just have some plain text, you're likely going to put it within a paragraph tag. Paragraph tag is a P. Alright? Now I don't feel like sitting here typing, so I'm going to go in and Google what's called Greek text. 
And Greek text is sort of a placeholder text. If you're designing something and you want to like show someone what their page is going to look like, but you don't know the actual words that you're going to use, a lot of times you'll substitute Greek text in there. So I'm going to copy and paste this sort of dummy text in my paragraph. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's not even really Greek. It kind of looks like Latin. I don't know if this even means anything. I don't think so. But the idea is that if you don't know exactly the wording that's going to be there, you still want to put some text there because you want to show them this is what it's going to look like. Okay. All right. There you go. All right. So let's go and let's look at this, and I'll put down here, you know, copyright 2013 Mike Zellers. All right. So I'm going to save this, and we can view our HTML document two ways. One way is to view the code like on this level where we're in the guts of the code and we're making changes and we're editing it. But this isn't the way the user's going to view it, right? Users are going to view it within a web browser. So they will view the page this way. And it'll look like that to them. Now, it's pretty plain, right? Because all we have specified so far is, um, is the, um, the HTML, the content. We haven't done anything with styling yet, all right? So that's, where, that's, what, that's one of the things that we're going to do next, is we're going to get into the styling of this. All right. Let me go and make a slight change to this. And I'm going to put up in here an H2, which is a second level header. And I'm going to say home page. Just identify to the person what page I'm on within my site. That's, that is what the, whatever the browser is set at. The browsers. Right. Um, typically, that will be uh, on a Windows machine, it will be Times New Roman. But uh, again, you can you could change that to set it to be whatever you want. The appearance of the page is, com is comes about by two factors. One of them is the person's browser settings. The other one is code that I put in, my CSS code, that's going to control the appearance. So those two things like work together. So in other words, if I don't specify something, the browser then defaults will be used. If I do specify something, then what I specify will be used. It overrides with the browser. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, depending on the browser you have, you can turn off CSS, you know, but in, as a general rule, yes, it will override what the browser is. Okay. So, here's our page. Again, I'm, I'm editing it, so I'm viewing it in Notepad. Here's that same page that I'm looking at it within the browser. Okay. Now, we could put in the video tags and the audio tags and the image tags like we did uh, next time. But what I like to do now is um, create a second page. And because I'm conscious of time, I'll go in. And I'll simply clone this guy a couple of times. I didn't want to do that. Normally what you do is after you've created sort of a template of how you want your page to look, you then go and clone it a few times. So I'll rename this one page one. And I'll make a second page called page two. I'll go and edit each of these, and the only thing I'll change in it is the title. I'll put in page one on this one, and I'll put page two on this one.
So ideally, I want to. I would want to be able to visit the home page, then click to go to page one, click to go to page two, click a link to come home. All right. So I would want a navigation of all those pages. So what we'll look at now is how to create links. All right. Let's go into our index and. <coughs> I'm going to create the three links for my three pages. Again, I might do this a little fancier if this was a full-blown HTML class, but this is sufficient for what we're doing here. So I'll create a link to the home page, a link to page one, and a link to page two. Now, ideally, I would have had this navigation built before I started cloning those other pages, right? Because now I have to go back and I have to copy this stuff over to the other pages. Yeah, I'll, I'm just going to go and copy this. And I'll save it. And I'll copy that into page one. Save. Copy that into page two. And save. So now, when I view this, I have my home page, and I have link, link, link. If I click on that, I go to page two, page one, and home. So notice it's switching the, the title of the page, which is the only thing that's different from that. Now if I wanted that at the bottom of the page, I would just... Just move that navigation down to the bottom. Right. Absolutely. Now, notice that, again, the way a link works is a, a trap equals the name of the page, here again, the assumption is, is that everything's in the same folder. I then end the, end the quote, end the tag, have the word that I want the link to be, and then end the link tag. All right. Now, this is functional, and we could even add images and videos to it, but it looks really, really, really plain. All right? There's no real sense of typography other than we make some of the titles bigger than others and, and that sort of thing. We don't, we're not really branding this. In other words, um, you know, maybe if this was for an environmental organization, we would want the background green. Maybe if this was a page for some sort of patriotic thing, we would want the page red, white, and blue. Maybe if this was something for Christmas, we'd want it to be, um, green and uh, red, maybe for Valentine's Day, pink or whatever. The point is, is functionally this is a content, and that's all you should put in HTML is a content, whether it be text, links, headings, and so on. And then these things sort of group your page into sections. Now, how we want this to look is entirely part of CSS, and that's what we're going to do next. I've seen that A tag a lot. Uh-huh. Y A. A stands for anchor. Okay. Links were, were called anchors, because you actually can link inside a page. So yeah, it's kind of goofy, but but yeah. All right. What I'm gonna do now is Download Google Chrome. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that in a minute. Yeah. You know, if I put the request in the lab guy, they would they would do that, but it's one of those things that in the heat of the battle I forget. I am not aware 
of, of uh, Notepad++. Notepad++. The one thing I use a lot on the Mac is called the Komodo editor. K-O-M-O-D-O. Yeah, that's, that's, that's actually better than Notepad++. That actually exists on Windows, too. It's a nice free HTML editor. Sorry, was it Windows? No. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Why do you think I said no? Because I'm because being, you want us to learn how to Because I want you to learn to code, you know. This would this is like <clears throat> this would be like if you were in a culinary school, you know, or a, a, a pastry chef school, you know. There might be be some delicious box cakes out there, <laughs> right? But you wouldn't learn how to use those. All right. Why not? Well, because that's, that's a shortcut. Now, what's wrong with GUI or WYSIWYG-based uh, web development tools? A prime reason, one of our guiding principles in doing any sort of software development or web development is making it easy to change. Most of those WYSIWYG editors do things in a very brute force way, which means that it may be more difficult to change later on. So if we learn good coding practices by doing it by hand and seeing the impact, even if we then later on go and use a WYSIWYG uh, a tool, we'll know how to use the tool effectively instead of just taking the path of least resistance and doing what the WYSIWYG editor wants us to do. It's kind of like, you know, yeah, you know, as a student, you learn how to add and subtract and multiply and divide. Does that mean that you're never going to use a calculator? No. Once you learn that and you understand the purposes of it, when you're in an advanced physics class, yeah, you do that because it's convenient, because you know it. But until you know it, it's probably good not to rely on that. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a style sheet file. And the style sheet file will allow us to take control of how this page looks. So I'm going to go in here and click on new and I'm going to save it on the desktop and I'm going to call it my eyes aren't working today if you see CSS there we go And I'll call it just something like main.css. Now in here, I'm going to use a different language in HTML, a whole different set of rules. And it's going to specify aspects of the page's appearance, really any aspect of the page or any element on the page's appearance. What I usually start out with is demonstrating color, because color is something that's very obvious. You can, at a glance, you can see, yeah, the color change, where sometimes with the fonts, you know, if I switch between you know, two fonts that are very close, it might not be immediately apparent that, that I changed the font. But color, uh, unless you happen to be colorblind, uh, you can usually tell right off. All right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put body, and I'm going to say background, yellow, color, blue. Keep in mind that these colors aren't, I'm not choosing these colors because I think they're particularly good colors. I'm, I'm choosing the colors so they stand out, so it's obvious, you know. Now, that's my CSS code, and I can save it. What I have to do now is I have to point to that CSS code in my HTML file. I, I think that's what the question was earlier. Do we still do that? And we do. In the head section, I'm going to say, Link href equals the name of my style file, which again is all in the same folder, so I just put the name. And I think I'm getting this right. I think you're right. I make these mistakes periodically to see if you're paying attention. I had an old nun in the fourth grade, and, and she would claim that she fell asleep to test that if we would behave ourselves when someone wasn't watching. 
And I think even when I was in the fourth grade, I knew that that wasn't true, that she was not 